the prayer she just read is a beautiful pilgrim prayer. And um, what I'm going to share with you is a bit of our journey. My husband and I went on um, on the Camino de Santiago. Um, so the slides will kind of play through as I speak. And um, yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so they'll just sort of play through. And then any questions we can have at the end. Um, there we go. Is it starting? There we go. So the Camino de Santiago, if you're familiar with it or not, it takes place in Spain. The Santiago de Compostela is in the northern region or the northwestern region of Spain. And this is where the burial site of St. James was. And in the ninth century, this his tomb was found. And that is when the first pilgrimage started. The pilgrimage was um, started by King Alphonsus II, who was in Oviedo. And when he heard about the finding of St. James, he immediately went and erected a church above it to protect him. When my husband and I decided to walk, we decided to walk on the French Camino. And this is known as the French Camino. It begins in the Pyrenees on the coast of, right on the border of France and Spain, in Roncesvalles, Spain, from a 13th century monastery. So we decided to walk that. It goes through the Pyrenees, through the Rioja region, through the plains of Spain, a lot of plains, just empty, long roads <laughs> for many, many days, and into a beautiful, forage area of, of Galicia at the end. And as we were journeying and as I was preparing for this talk, I thought about four words kept coming to mind is journey, preparation, encounter, and transformation. In the entire way, these were the this sort of the mantra that we kept thinking is we're on this journey we set out to do. It's a 790 kilometer walk, so about 500 miles. We went through Pamplona, Lyon, um, Burgos, Astorga, many of the beautiful cities of Spain over to, with our goal in mind at, at the cathedral here at the Santiago de Compostela. So we knew where we were headed, but what we had to do is each day attend to the day. So in order to do that, we started preparing for our journey that began on October 1st, 2021. We started to prepare on June 1st, 2021. And it was recommended to us that we walk five miles every single day to prepare. In this, you know, we thought, it seems like a lot. We'll already have done the walk before we even get there. But <laughs> we, the important piece of that was, is we had to come to know ourselves. It started us in removing ourselves from our daily routine. We had to really change our daily routine in order to fit these five miles in no matter what. And we, we were able to get our bodies ready, our minds ready, our spirit ready to go. And this allowed us, once we arrived in Spain and started our walk on October 1st, it allowed us the ability to be able to take in all that we were experiencing. And really, this preparation allowed us to fully engage in the encounter that we were going to partake in. We had an idea what it was going to be like. We hadn't read books or watched movies. There's many out there. But we wanted to try and just take in what we could. When we got there, we found in the first nine days that the shoes that we had so meticulously prepared before we got there were complete trash. I had no treads left. My feet, and we didn't have blisters because we did everything they said. Lather your feet with Vaseline, put your socks on, then put your shoes on. No blisters, but we, we were getting done with the day and we were just dying. My feet were so sore because my treads on my good hiking shoes that I had carefully prepared were just gone. The, the terrain was so intense on our walks. And we were walking anywhere from 15 to 23 miles a day on average. So we would get in, we got into a town on the 9th of October and we did the unthinkable. We went to a hiking store and bought a new pair of boots. And everybody said, don't do that. You don't want to do it. You're going to ruin your entire journey because you can't start in boots that you haven't worked in. 
Well, we did it. It took me about two hours to decide, mind you, but I did it. And I put on the boots the next morning. My husband got a pair as well. And the next morning we put them on a little concerned. We thought, well, no, we'll be in Lyon in a few days. We can always get something different if these don't work. But they worked. We, I, it really was, it was divine intervention on this one because we would put them on in the morning and, and that's what we wore the rest of the time. And it seemed so simple to make that change. It, you know, typically to change shoes is not that big of a deal. But this was our mode of transportation. They had to be right. And we had to have it all prepared. But in the midst of that preparation, in the midst of that journey, actually taking the journey, we had to be open to make the change. So there was a willingness and an open, openness to change in, in the midst of it. And every day went this way. Every day we attended to the day. We knew where we were headed, but we had to attend to the moment of every day. In, in the most delightful aspect of all of it, when I think back on this journey and, and I was preparing to come speak, is really the encounter with other. We encountered God, we encountered ourselves, but we encountered other most importantly. Everybody's story, everybody's journey was so different. Why they were there. There was one woman that we traveled with who had lost her husband not long before she came to the Camino. She thought this would be a beautiful place to be able to begin her mourning process. And by the 10th day into the journey, she had to leave. She could not handle it. And she said, you know, this, is, this isn't the journey I need to be on. I'm going to go to France where he had played professional basketball, where they had spent some time. So she got on a train and her journey took her to France where she kept in touch with us, part of our Camino family. And she spent a few days and was able to, she left his ashes there in France where it was very special to them. So her journey took her in a completely different direction. But she was open through prayer to know to take that, that other step. There was a gentleman who was from Belgium and he had been a, in his career a history teacher and always wanted to walk the Camino. He walked out of his door in July of 2021 and began walking the Camino. We saw him in October outside of, <laughs> of Santiago de Compostela and he had journeyed all the way. And, and it was just a moment that we met with him, but he was just so lovely and he was so willing and open to share his story about his life with his wife and, and why he decided to take this long journey that he was on. But this is, this is the routine. Many Spaniards will just walk out their door and walk a portion of the journey. And then the next time they have a few extra days of vacation, they'll, they'll walk a second leg of the journey. There were police officers and a group of police officers and firefighters from Barcelona who were absolutely a hoot. And they had four days to get a chunk of the journey done and they were booking it. And they would come out and they were loud and they were excited and all of this Spanish being spoken around us and they would go way ahead of us and find themselves in a bar and when we would walk in it felt like a cheers episode. It was like, hey, and there we all were. <laughs> it was like greeting everybody coming in. So it, this just continued the whole, the whole way along. And everybody's story was different. And, and I think what was really spectacular too is that since we were walking through the towns, it wasn't just the people, the pilgrims along the way, it was the people we were meeting. There was one small community. Many of the towns along the plains were set up because of the Camino. They, they sprung up just as hospitality sites for the Camino and after centuries now are, are small towns. And we were walking through one, it was a particularly rainy day which happened a lot. And we were walking through and there were about five or six of us and all of a sudden a gate from the stone wall opened and this man came out and it happened to be his barn. On the other side of the stone wall is where his cows were. And he was getting us all over there and he said, come look, come look, come look. And his calf had just been born and it was standing up and he wanted us to see that the calf was healthy and that it was standing. And, and he just, everybody coming by, he was coming out and he was pulling us over so that we could see the calf and see that it was a healthy calf that, they, that he just, his cow had. 
And, um, you know, and I think another town we were in, oftentimes we would get in and be in in time to go to Pilgrim Mass. And I would like to say we were able to make it all the time, but we weren't. And there were a couple reasons. One, we were extremely tired. It was a long day. But also with COVID, oftentimes the masses were not always open to the pilgrims because the communities had had a lot of loss during COVID in some of them, and they weren't quite ready to welcome in the pilgrims yet. But there was one town we got into, and we went to mass, and there were about 10 of us in mass, and the priest came in, and he checked all of our nationalities, and he went up and he, he offered mass, and then he called the 10 of us up, and he read our Pray, he blessed us in our language. And then he pointed, there was a young lady from Britain, and he said, sing a song. And she just looked, and he said, come on, sing a song. And so she sang something beautiful. She had a beautiful voice, and it was a, a lullaby type of song. And then he looked at the Spaniards, and he said, sing this. And so they sang whatever it was. He looked at the three Americans standing there, and he said, Sing Amazing Grace. So the three, the three Americans, we stood and we sang Amazing Grace. And then there was a Frenchman who was standing and he was singing Amazing Grace also in French. And he had the most beautiful tenor voice. I could have listened to him all night. So we thought, oh, yay, this was really fun. We're done. Let's go eat. And he said, no, 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 pictures, pictures. And he took us over in front of a portrait of St. James. And he said, now we can take pictures. And we started to take, you know, take our turn, take, no, no, no. You must sing while you take pictures. And so we all, and in Spanish, mind you, we all had to sing and continue to sing. He wouldn't let us stop singing until all the pictures, and he would point to who got to go take the next picture of the group. And, you know, after that, we went and ate and had our typical meal of fried eggs, french fries, and wine. And that, you would think, it would be this beautiful Spanish fare. But typically, it was fried eggs and french fries. Sometimes, it was just potato chips and wine. It depended on what we got. <laughs> but we, we, we basically, <laughs> it sounds awful, but actually, at the end of a long, hot day, you've got your carbs, your salt, and your relaxation. It's perfect. <laughs> so we were able to enjoy. And it was all of these encounters with the people that we were, we were um, walking with, with people that we just encountered in the towns. And then we found at the end of the day, you know, you walk with people, but typically at the end of the day, my husband and I would end up walking the last, you know, several miles together quietly, just the two of us. And by the time we would finish and, and start moving toward finishing the day, we would get our phone out and put on a piece, a, a violin piece that is a praise and worship piece. And we'd just play that and we would listen to that and, and finish up our day. And that, this became the rhythm, the meditative rhythm of the journey, of the walk, the dust, the little bit of sore feet, the aches and pains, getting up in the morning, packing the bag, figuring out what we needed to take, what we needed to discard, what was useless to us, what we could pass on to somebody else that they, you know, maybe they needed something. And just attend to the day and walk and finish up in prayer and meditation and in some good wine and potato chips. And this is, this is the routine of the day. And, you know, we were in this liminal space where we weren't having to attend to our daily, the daily grind. We do have, you know, internet now. We did have Google Maps, so we knew where we were all the time, mostly. And, you know, so we did have contact with family and, and everything going on. But in general, you know, we didn't have to think about those things. We just needed to, to think about ourselves. Oh, excuse me. We needed to think about ourselves and, you know, what God was attending, what it, we were attending to that day pay attention to the others around us and who needed help. At one point we got poles because somebody said, you don't walk with poles, you need to have poles. And we thought, well, okay, I guess we'll get poles. And we walked, I walked with them for a while. 
who was like, I don't like these. I gave them to my husband. He tried walking with them for a while. It, neither of us were going to use them. We were folding them up. And somebody we were journeying with broke her poles. It was like, ah, I have some poles for you here. <laughs> and so it, this, is, this is how the time went along. And, you know, I, I think years ago, I would have never thought that we would have gone and done this journey. You know, 500 miles across Spain. And yet, you know, I can't imagine not having done it now. When we got to Santiago and seeing all of the people come in, the folks that we had visited with along the journey and hugs, somebody that we didn't even know their name, but we knew where they were from. They were from Newfoundland. And they, every time we saw them, you know, it was just a hug and you made it and we looked out for one another. And I think, wow, the transformation then that takes place, you, you don't realize it when you're going through the grind day to day to day. But when you get done and you have that moment to rest and look around, you realize that something, something changed. And that transformation is ongoing. It's, it, it started again when I was getting ready for this talk. It, it doesn't end. And we then move on to the next journey and we move on to the next step. And I think that is, as Sister Diane was saying with the Lent, that is something that, that we recognize and continue to recognize. And I think my husband and I come back to this often. We'll, we'll look at our Camino family because we're still kind of in touch and we'll see where people are and what they're doing. And you know, somebody's getting married and somebody had an adult baptism. And, you know, and it's, it's all just so exciting because it's like these are people that now are forever a part of our lives. And their journey continues and they continue to transform on their journey as well. So this is, um, I'm glad I was able to come and visit with you all today and share some of this. I know it, it's kind of quick, but I, I want to end with a um, quote from Pope Francis. And it, it is time to reconsider the path we are taking, to find the route that leads us home, and to rediscover our profound relationship with God, on whom everything depends. Lent is not just about the little sacrifices we make, but about discerning where our hearts are directed. This is the core of Lent. It is the journey, the preparation, the encounter, and the transformation. I, I could go on all day, but I won't because I know you're on your, your lunch time. But I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has any questions um, at all. We are, actually. We are going back at the end of May, <laughs> at um, May 26th, and we'll be walking. Um, yeah, actually, I can probably go back to the. I don't know if I can. I don't want to mess with it. We're going to be walking sort of the northern route. It's, it's considered the Camino del Norte. And we'll be doing a portion of it um, from Santander, Spain, over to Oviedo, Spain. And Oviedo is the capital of Asturias, which is where Tom's grandmother is from, is this area. So um, we're going to walk that. It'll be along the coastline. There's some primitive um, cave art. And it'll be a very different type of journey. It'll be a more relaxed. It's only just over 100 miles. It's nothing like the the 500 mile walk. And um, prior in 2017, we walked from Porto, Portugal to Santiago de Compostela. So we did do a little portion of the, the Portuguese route prior to the, the major route um, that we undertook in October. So at the so. end, you see St. James Cathedral? Yes, so at the end, um, we enter into the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela. And St. James is um, entombed beneath. Okay. So you can go down through um, in the cathedral area. You can walk down through and see where the tomb is and um, walk up through it. And it's just below the altar. So um, I did not put a lot of the pictures of the various cathedrals because I could have filled hours with these beautiful, magnificent cathedrals. Um, and those, those photos are, are fairly um, accessible. Um, online, but uh, yeah. So these were all photos we have taken. We took along the way. There was a Korean gentleman who was a blogger from Korea, and he was the one who was traveling with the mule. And you can 
get the donkeys and mules to travel with. And so he, he traveled along the way with the, with the mule. So that was, <laughs> that was fun to meet with him too. Yes? Yeah. I mentioned that, uh, uh, of course, in some ways, it's some yeah. thing. Yes. And uh, you would have passed through some of those areas. Were there how close you were to Calavega? Yeah. Um, Not Burgos, we were in. I didn't see it on, uh, on the map, the actual place where Dominic grew up. But I did see that you went through or close to Palencia. Palencia. We would have been close to that. It wasn't a town that we walked through. Did you ever go into the churches? Always, always. So um, Burgos would have been close to that area. And we were in Burgos. Burgos actually is very, the cathedral in Burgos is absolutely magnificent. Um, that was built a lot, uh, magnificent, because that was the capital for a long time. But that's the area, we, we were in Burgos. But some of those smaller areas, because we stayed on the Camino, we didn't get off um, to some of the side community areas. Yeah. Um, in Valencia, that's where Dominic Stokes Yes, yes. And so that was, that's, but when I was there, I didn't walk the Camino. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was the first time I went through the Yes. So yes. Shed those yes. Than yes. Than oh, it's all along the way. And they, and yes. They oh, did they? <laughs> that is something. Yes. 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 There are there are many things you see along the way. Oftentimes, stones. You see piles of stones. Um, the Iron Cross. I think maybe I can go back through. I might be able to, yeah. The Iron Cross is one of the highest points. And when you get to the Iron Cross, the mountain, it's almost a mountain that goes up to the Iron Cross at this time because people will come and discard their, a rock is what, what you're supposed to do is take your, take your rock and lay it down. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get back to it. Probably not. Uh, right before this. So, yes. We can depend on God. Yeah. We can depend on God for sure. Um, and our prayer to God and be able to listen to our hearts and attend to ourselves in that prayer. I think you said to go into the self, and I think this is one of the pieces. I, I know when we got boots, as I shared, that it seems so simple. Everybody was telling us, do not do this, do not do this, but we had to depend on what we were, we were knowing was the right thing. So, yeah, God, God, our preparation was great, but Ohio flat is nothing like the Pyrenees, I can tell you. In, in the first few days, it was a real eye-opener. <laughs> no, no. We never did, and I think that was one of the things that the preparation really helped us with. We knew we would not give up. We knew that we would make it to Santiago de Compostela. And, you know, and I think that, was, um, that really is the biggest piece of the preparation. We knew there was never giving up. It was really hard some days. But, you know, getting, and sitting in a bath of ice water at the end of the day just to kind of get your legs to feel a little better sometimes is, is pretty brutal. Um, but, but we were never going to give up. I don't know. I imagine. Well, she changed her journey. Yeah, I, I would imagine people do. Yeah. Do you sleep outside or do you sleep in inns? Yeah, inns, but there are hostels and albergues and um, bed and breakfasts along the way in some of the bigger cities. There are hotels. Um, they don't want pilgrims sleeping outside. So really, at all costs, you, you pretty much don't sleep outside. Uh, to get a hostel room or an, um, a room at the albergues, oftentimes people will take off very early in the morning when it's still dark to get to the next town to make sure they've got a bed. Because if there's not a bed in that town, you might have to go to the next one. And that might not be very close. 
So um, we worked with a company that actually had set up our lodging along the way. So we did not have to do that. And that made a, a big difference. Um, but they do, um, they will ask you not to stay outside because they don't want camping along the way. Mm -hmm. Unless, unless there is no other way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So 33 days. So 33 days. The journey was supposed to be 34. And most of the group that we walked with finished in 34 days. But again, trusting God and trusting our intuition on the 33rd day, we realized we needed to finish up just the two of us on our journey. And it was going to be just over 26 miles. And we're both runners. We've run some marathons. So it was like, ah, we, that's a marathon. We can do that. It was gray. It was a little rainy. We're like, it's like Columbus Marathon. So this is perfect. And they thought we were crazy. And we said, well, as long as there's a room at the hotel we're going to be staying at, we're, we're on our way. And we went ahead. And that was one of the most spectacular moments is that we just, both of us knew, you know, we hadn't said anything. Both of us knew it was time to finish up. And we went ahead and, and finished the journey that day. And even when we walked in, though, there were two other people walking in at the same time that we had seen along the way. So it was so exciting to be able to a woman from um, Sweden and a gentleman from uh, Germany, I believe he's from Germany. So that was really exciting to, to finish with people that we had known as well. Yeah. Yes. Why did we go? <laughs> <laughs> we weren't looking. You know, I think that was, that's a big part of it. And, and we're not, we weren't looking for anything. We were really going and, and being drawn to the Camino for experience and for encounter. Um, being outside, being in an area, encountering other people, getting out of our parameters that we are so comfortable in. We really wanted to press ourselves to be someplace where it's, it's just a little uncomfortable. And um, I had had surgery in 2020 um, and had recovery. So it was also for both of us, it was, it was a time of, of really full recovery and healing. So, but not looking for anything. I think that was a key. Some people were. Some people were looking for something and they struggled a lot because they weren't finding exactly what they wanted. Yes. 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 Uh -huh. We did. It was from Porto, Portugal to um, the to Santiago de Compostela. That one was different. It was a really kind of a last minute um, decision to go. There was a group going. It was the year of, um, help me out, the, um, it was the Jubilee year. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's like year, what was that called? It was the Jub Jubilee year, and we were ending on the feast day of um, St. James. So we decided, yeah, let's give this a try, let's go. We had, we had wanted to try it, and it was a short, it was a shorter distance. So that time, um, I think really, it was kind of about the adventure. You know, what is this going to be like? And so it was a little bit different um, this this last time when we went for the longer journey. It was really a, um, for the encounter and to, to continue the journey. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you know, it is. We can deepen ourselves and go inside, and we will become transformed. We will be different people. We'll be closer to God. We will be different than we when we, when we started that with Liz. Yes. It's really beautiful to hear your story. And, and oh, thank I'm you. Sure you could say much, much more. Oh, I know. I was like trying to condense it down. Oh, it, Robert just left, but I was telling him the other day it's taking 33 days of this really extensive journey and putting it in 15 minutes. <laughs> so.